Hello, hello. Trying to get everybody in at the same time. Now, let me put my comments on. Okay, so here we go. Okay, can everybody see me? Okay, why is this? Okay, my eyeglasses are causing a lot of glare from the uh, curtains. Hello, 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 Marquise. How are you? Thank you for joining me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Miss B. Thank you for joining me. Let me scoot back so everybody can see me. Return my. Okay. Hold on. I got to. I'm always making adjustments because you can't see the stove. Okay. Can you see me over here? Hello, Instagram. There we go. Hello, Facebook and YouTube. Hello on TikTok. Hello, Christy Mason. Uh, how are you? Thank you for joining me. Okay, so today we're making a quick dish. It's called, uh, I don't even know what it's called. I'm making an Alfredo dish. I'm using some new Alfredo sauce that I've never used before. This one is a creamy basil Alfredo. I usually use the one with garlic, but because the spinach bread that I'm making to go with it has spinach and basil and uh, pesto in it, I figured I would use the Alfredo to match the flavors. Bertoli's, yes, I love Bertoli. Yes, they're so yummy. Um, I like Bertoli, but I also like Bertoli. This is the, uh, let, me, let me show you. I know it's gonna, probably going to be backwards to some of you, but this is the... Uh, Pa uh, I almost said pasta, so it's pesto sauce that we're going to be using. Okay, so I'm going to get the, for some reason, my TikTok video is not, okay. Hello, Marissa, how are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Hi, Christy Cakes, how are you? Okay, so we're going to get started with the, um, the spinach spread to go over the bread because I need it ready. So when I start cooking the meat and I start cooking the uh, the bread, it'll all come together and it'll be warm. I like all my food to be warm at the same time. So whatever's gonna take the longest, I start with that first and then I work my way to the one that takes the shortest. Okay, so right here, I have some chopped spinach. Um, I just took two handfuls of spinach, uh, washed it, and then I dried it with my salad spinner and then I chopped it up. You don't need a whole lot, just, you know, but once you chop it down, it gets to be a little bit of nothing. So I have some spinach and I have three small cloves of garlic that I'm going to add. I have minced it up with my microplane. So I'm just gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna add it to the spinach. Give it an extra flavor. Now, I have some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. This makes the recipe to me. The cheese, I'm a cheese person. This cheese makes the recipe. Hold on, let me take this out of my ear. I hear feedback from myself. I need that out of my ear. So we're going to take this. And I'm going to add, well, I like to eyeball things, but for those of you who are not eyeballers, I'm going to get a measuring cup. This is a one-fourth cup. Okay, so this is a one-fourth cup. I'm going to measure this out. This is fresh Parmesan cheese. That's a fourth of a cup. And I'd say a half a cup will do. I get the stirring and it doesn't look like enough, I always add more. So you can always add more. You don't necessarily have to have it in already. And 
I have my pesto. This is Butoni's uh, pesto. If you are allergic to nuts, do not use this. It has it is made with uh, walnuts and pine nuts. So if you have an uh, alert allergy to nuts, please don't use this. But I love this. I love this. I love this because mm, it smells so good. It has basil and pine nuts and garlic and uh, Parmesan cheese. Here's my spoon. And it also has the walnuts and the pine nuts. Um, and what else does it have in here? But those, those are the main ingredients that make it yummy. Oh, and it has olive oil in here. So it's a creamy, can you see that? It's creamy. So I'm gonna put one, two, and three heaping teaspoons in there. All right, it goes in the sink. All right, and now, I like to add my garlic flavors. This is a Mrs. Dash uh, garlic and herb seasoning. Let me show it to you. I like to sprinkle some of that in there. Hello, Playful Acre. How are you? Hi, Mimi. Mimi X Graham. How are you? Thanks for joining me. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little in there. And then I have, and this is salt free, just so you know, this is salt free. The cheese has a lot of salt in it, and the pesto has a lot of salt in it. So I try not to use as much uh, salt in here. But this is a salt-free garlic and herb seasoning. I like all my seasonings to be all, you know, kind of. Each one of them has something different in it, so I like it to be in there. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in there. And... If you don't have one of these, get you one. This is an Italian herb seasoning grinder. It's made by McCormick. It costs about two, depends on where you live, as how much it costs. This one cost me about, uh, I think it was like $275, somewhere around there. But it's a grinder, and it has, if you look at these little notches, what, it has three different sizes uh, that you can um, grind it on. I like it on the small one because it has red pepper flakes. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see those peppercorns in there? Can you see the peppercorns in there? I don't like a big chunk of pepper in my mouth. So I put it on the, the small one and I just grate it into my recipes. It also has red pepper flakes in there. And I don't uh, like a whole lot, a big chunk of that at one time either. So... I'm just gonna grate some of that in there. Now this has salt in it, so I won't put as much in there. And last but not least, this is for the grill, but I like it in recipes. This is uh, roasted garlic and herb seasoning. I'll let y'all see that. Y'all can add this to your, your grocery list, but this is good on meats too. But I like it in my, anything that I do with garlic and herbs, so I'm not gonna put a lot in there. Again, it has salt. Now, what I am gonna do, let's see if this butter is melted. Oh yeah. Add some butter to make it spread better. I only need about half of this to start out with because I have the pesto in there. And I'm adding some olive oil too. Make it spread better. Okay. So I'm going to take half of this stick of butter and put it in there. And this is not melted butter. You don't want it melted because it doesn't spread as well. And it, it just tastes different. So just have it melted. Sit it out and let it, uh, not melted, let it sit out and get soft, not melted. Now, I'm going to stir this up and then I'm going to add my olive oil. I'm going to put it down counter before I drop it. That's what I'm going to do. Stir this up. And this is going to be our spread for our bread. That's going to go very good with 
our um, spaghetti, our, uh, our spaghetti squash rather, and our meat sauce. And then I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil because if you see it, it's kind of chunked together and um, I don't like it chunky like that. The Parmesan cheese soaks up the, the butter. So I'm going to add a little oil to it, a little olive oil. I like the extra light tasting olive oil. I'll put about a tablespoon in there and I'll stir it up again. Now, while you're doing all this, you can have your spaghetti squash. I like cooking my spaghetti squash in the oven because it doesn't leave a whole lot of liquid. I cook it in the microwave, but if you cook it in the microwave, put some water in the center of it, in the middle of this, and put some, wrap it in plastic, and put it in the microwave and cook it for about 10 minutes until it's soft. There we go. Now there's a better consistency. Now this is going on our spinach bread. This is going to be There you have it. This is what we're going to put on our bread and throw it in the toast oven. Hello, uh, Liz, Liz and all things life. I think I got that right. How are you? Okay. So we have that done. Now we're going to start our meat for our sauce. So it can be ready to go. And while our meat is cooking, we will... Uh, while our meat is cooking, we'll cut up our bread because I bought a French uh, loaf and I just slice it up or you can buy it already sliced. I got this loaf and I'm going to slice it up. Hi, Pilot Jones. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so I'm going to take my, my meat. This is turkey, sweet Italian turkey sausage. And what I do? oh, my scissors, I'm sorry. My scissors are over here. And I'm gonna take it out of the casing. So what I like to do is run the knife, cause this has a, it was the little casing up all around it. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna pull it out and put it into my skillet. So that way I can crumble it. I try to find this meat uh, in just a regular, like a loaf type, uh, but it doesn't come in like, you know how ground beef comes out in that little one pound loaf looking thing? I can't find this, but this makes, it's, it's perfect for this recipe. So I just get them this kind, take the casing off of it and cook it that way. As my mama said, one monkey don't stop no show. So I'm not going to let one thing stop me from getting the results that I, that I want. I may have to cook it differently, but I don't let it stop me. So I'm going to take the casings off of this and get this started. And then I'll show you, uh, I'll also show you what I did to the spaghetti squash, how you make it spaghetti because it looks like it's just a regular squash, but it's the way that you take it out of the hole that makes it look like spaghetti. I used to fool my kids with it all the time when they didn't want to eat vegetables. So I found out about spaghetti squash and voila, here's your vegetable and they didn't know it. Let me put these over here in the sink so they can be washed. And wash this meat like I do off my hands. I'm going to be spreading bacteria. All right. There we go. Let me dry my hands. All right. And I'll take this and put it over here in my trash container. All right. So let me turn the fire on. And... Let me find my masher. 
I love this little tool. This is a masher. I love it. It has like little, uh, I won't say pointed edges, but it's thinner on the ends so I can mash well. So, hi, uh, is that Smiklos? S. Miklos? Okay, I'm not gonna botch up your name any further. Uh, but welcome, thank you for joining me. So, we're gonna just take our masher, mash this meat up so it'll brown. I'm gonna add some of my seasonings to it, my garlic seasonings. So, everything kind of matches up across the board. And when I say matches up, I mean they have the same flavors. Add a little bit, little bit of this, little bit of that. If you want to add fresh garlic to this, you can add fresh garlic. But I figured I had enough fresh garlic in my in my bread that I don't need any extra. I'll add a little bit of this. Let me turn this part off. So that. All right. Now we're gonna smash this all up. slice my bread so that it'll be ready to get going to the toaster oven and when I get done I'm going to fix the plate and we'll see how all of this is going to come together now you can add other things to your meal but my husband and I we are simple people we, we eat like two or three things we don't have to have five six seven different things on the plate at one time the spinach bread, the spaghetti squash with the alfredo sauce, meat sauce is enough for us. If I had guests coming over, you know, I would add a salad to it or something. But uh, between the spinach and the spaghetti, that's enough vegetables for us. And besides that, we have salads throughout the week, so I don't want to overdo it with the salads. Now, I have sliced my bread. I'm pulling it apart. Slice my bread. And I'm just gonna take take some of the the spread and spread it on it. You can spread it as thick as you want. I like it spread thick. Get more vegetables that way. You can spread it thinly. Most kids don't like it thick, but I like it thick because, hey, I know it's going to taste good. So there you go. We're going to take that and we're going to put it in the toaster oven. But right now, I'm just getting it done. So when, it's, when I'm ready to go, it's ready to go. Let's tend to this meat again. It's cooking up faster than I thought it would. The noise. Cooking can be a little uh, loud sometimes. So. And you can use the spaghetti squash with your favorite marinara sauce. I've used it in uh, with the chicken spaghetti, which is good too. I've used the spaghetti squash uh, in different soups. To give it a little thickness um, because it really has it has a very light flavor to it it's not a distinct uh like like uh lettuce or anything uh, what should i say it doesn't even taste like a noodle it looks like a noodle but it doesn't taste like a noodle it's kind of one of those bland uh vegetables that you can just add to pretty much anything like zucchini. Zucchini is kind of bland unless you put some seasoning to it. So you can add it to anything. But 
but you can put this the spaghetti squash in, in, in soups uh, as I'm doing, making a recipe of it, a recipe from it of a bone. So you can add two things. Okay, our meat is just about ready. All right, I'm going to drain some of this oil off of this meat so I can add the sauce. And then I'm going to continue with my bread. So it'll be ready by the time we get ready to, to plate. All right, I'm done with this one. Got my little ladle. I love this little ladle because it has these little holes in it right here and it allows me to drain things. This is my daughter's favorite recipe. Really? Oh, great, 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 great. Okay, so I'm gonna drain some of this. And I'm gonna make a big mess first. Hold on. Let me grab a paper towel and get this up so I won't fall and go slip in the slide over. Okay. okay, there we go. I'm gonna put that in the trash and wash my hands. All right. Now, let me turn the fire off. Put this over here and drain some of this oil off of it. And then we'll put it back on the fire with our, um, we'll put it back on the fire with our Alfredo sauce. Just while I, like fried chicken, I don't like all this grease in my food. All right. Okay. Now, let me grab the right quick. Sit that on top of here. There we go. Now. In the trash. All right. I have a half a cup of milk here that I'm going to add to the pot first. Because this Alfredo sauce is very thick, I always add milk to it. Again, let me show it to you for those who just joined me. This is uh, creamy basil Alfredo sauce, one of my favorite uh, Bertoli. Is one of my favorites. Hi, Miss Nisi. How are you? So this is what uh, what sauce we're gonna use with our meat sauce. Add that in. I'm gonna turn this down low. Whoops, bro. Turn this down low. Grab a spatula and stir that up. So the meat sauce is going to go over our spaghetti. It's going to be yum yum. There we go. So all I need to do is heat that up over that and it's ready to go. Now you can make this sauce a day ahead of time. I like making my marinara sauces and my, my Alfredo sauces a day ahead of time so that all the flavors can gel and get all ooh, good up in there. Oh, it's so good. So let me show you what I have going on in my skillet without wasting it. Can you see that? Y'all see what's going on in my skillet? There we go. Now. I'm just gonna let this simmer so the sauce will be good. I'm gonna finish making this bread so it'll be ready by the time we get done. Put that on there. One more. And if you have some of the, the sauce left, if you have some of this spread left, you can put it in the refrigerator. It'll last another three or four days in the refrigerator. 
So if you just want a snack or, you know, use it as an appetizer, you know, if you have dinner with some friends, you can use it several different ways. Okay, last piece of bread. Here we go. Put that on there. Now, I'm going to put this into the toaster oven. And I'll let show it to you once I get done toasting it. Okay. Let me grab my little pan. Put some foil. If you don't like cleanup, put some foil on top of your pans. I hate cleaning up uh, burnt on stuff. And if you're going to use the foil, here's a tip. This is the shiny side. This is the... The dull side. Put the shiny side down because if you don't put the shiny side down, it's going to the shiny side is going to reflect up on your bottom of your food and burn it. And the bottom will be cooked and burnt by the time the top part gets you know like you want it. So put the shiny side down. And I'm gonna put a couple of these pieces on here. I don't know if I can get them all on here. Yeah, I'll put the big pieces on there. And I'm going to put these in the toaster oven because I don't want to heat up. I've already heated up my house earlier cooking the spaghetti squash. I don't want that anymore. So I'm going to put these over here in the toaster oven. I put I like to put it on broil instead of toast. That way it only... I like to put it on broil instead of toast. That way it only cooks the top part. It browns the top part instead of being toasty on the bottom and toasty on the top. I like to cook just the top part because I like the salt, the, the the top part to be crunchy and the bottom part to be soft. So you got that crunchy uh, softness going on, the balance going on. Now I'm going to show you how to do this uh, spaghetti squash. Let me grab my little bowl. Let me just put it in. I got my casserole dish, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to just cook this down some. And I'll show you how I do my spaghetti squash. Okay. So this just a little bit. That's going to be yummy. Okay. So. This is still warm. I'm going to take my fork. Can you see that? And don't scrape it this way. Scrape it across. We're going to go like from side to side instead of up and down. So if you take it and lightly scrape it like this, it comes out. Can you see that? It looks like spaghetti. It's stringy like spaghetti can you see that so i'm just going to scrape across here and pull out my spaghetti and put it in my pan in the bottom of my casserole dish scrape out a little bit at a time so it won't come out chunky because uh if you take a big scoop it's going to come out in in big clumps and it doesn't taste very well when it comes out in clumps. So I just kind of take it and pull it out of there. Hold on. I'm going to turn this off. I'm trying to fig figure out a way to show you so you can see it. There we go. Once you find your rhythm on how to get it out of here, just scrape it all the way to the hole. 
You don't want to get a lot of that hole in there, but you want to scrape it all the way to the hole so you can get all the inside out of there. There we go. Now, the way that I cook this is I put, uh, put it in the oven for about 45 minutes on 375 degrees, uncovered on a rack. I have a, a cookie sheet that has like a rack inside of it that came with it. So I put it in there in the oven on the rack and let it cook for about 45 minutes until it gets tender. And that way, if you're going to do some more cooking to it, like if you add it to a soup or something, I would make it al dente, not necessarily until it gets soft, soft, but I would make it al dente because if you're gonna cook it some more, it's gonna end up as mush uh, if you cook it all the way through. But that just depends on the recipe that you're adding it to. Okay, and see, I've got it all out of the, the hole. And if you look in my pan, that's my spaghetti. Now, I'm going to do the other one real quick. Okay, I did my thumb. I'm stuck. I want to do this one right quick. Let me check the bread. It's coming along nicely. All right. I want to do this one in a hurry. Because I don't want my bread to burn. There we go. Almost done. Thank you. I am making spaghetti squash with an Alfredo uh, sauce, a meat, meaty Alfredo sauce. That's what I'm making. Okay. And now I have my spaghetti squash. Thank you, Marie. Thank you for sharing my, uh, my video. This is the spaghetti squash. And now I'm going to add a meat sauce on top. Let me check the bread. Okay. Still going good. All right, let me stir this up. Okay, let me grab a spoon and taste this. good y'all perfect 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 okay so i'm gonna take my spaghetti squash and i'm gonna pour my sauce on top make sure that i get some all over the top of my spaghetti squash so when i get it out of here and if you want to add more Alfredo sauce to it, uh, you can. If you, if you don't feel like it's enough sauce in there to go over your spaghetti, then add, feel free to add some more sauce to it. Warm it up first. You might want to warm it up first. And there we go. Let me pour the sauce on the top. Here we go. Now my bread should be warm. Dinner is hot, ready to be served. Come in. Okay, I'm gonna 
Okay. I am a perfectionist, y'all. I like to make my dishes look good. I want them to taste as good as they look. But there it is. I put, um, hold on, Marie. Uh, this is what it looks like. I'll hold it this way so you can see the spaghetti on the bottom and the sauce on top. Okay, so what I used for my sauce is some, some of this creamy basil Alfredo sauce. But I also got some sweet Italian, uh, what is it called? Sweet Italian turkey sausage. Uh, it's made by Jenny O. I love her sausage. Uh, so the, the brand Jenny O is sweet Italian uh, turkey sausage. I crumbled that up in the, in the skillet. I added this sauce to it and I have a cup of milk. And I also added my favorite seasonings, which is the Mrs. Dash garlic and herb, the uh, McCormick garlic and herb seasoning, salt free. And I added some roasted garlic and herb seasoning. This is a grill mate, uh, so it's for grilling. And I also used my one of my other favorites, the Italian herb. Uh, seasoning grinder so use all that in the sauce and let me get the bread y'all mm -hmm. let me show you the bread okay i just took the bread out of the toaster oven it's brown around the edges. Let me take it and put it down here. Let's see if I can grab a piece without it burning the heck out of me. Okay, this is going to require salsa. Okay. Now, let me you see how that splits apart. And it's hot. I knew that I was going to do that. Okay, so that's the bread. And we split it. And it's so yummy. And see, this is the back part. This is why I don't like uh, toasting the back, the bottom part of it. I only toast the top part of it because uh, I like it to be all. Fingers are burning. I like the, the, the top to be toasted and the bottom to be uh, soft. So you get that soft uh, and that, that crackle and it's soft all together, but it's like ooey gooey and good. That's what I'm looking for. So let me put this in the trash and wash my hands. And that, my dear darling, is the end of our cooking for today. And dinner is ready. A simple bread, a spinach bread, it has plenty of vegetables in it, and spaghetti squash, which is a vegetable too, with the meat sauce. So we're having vegetables and bread and meat today. You're welcome, you're welcome, welcome. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for spending your Sunday afternoon, part of your Sunday afternoon with me. Uh, if you can do me a favor, if you're on TikTok, can you double tap the screen and give me some likes? If you're on YouTube and uh, Facebook, can you send some likes and some comments? And also over here on Instagram, can you double tap that little heart button and send me some hearts? I'd appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for spending your Sunday afternoon with me. I will be here on Tuesday night with baby Q&A. And just in case you forgot, this, this Tuesday, my friend who is a postpartum doula, if you have friends who are going, just had a baby and going through postpartum, I will have my friend Sheila Davis 
here on Tuesday night. She is a postpartum doula. She has been doing this for years and years and years and years, and she has her own training now. So uh, join me Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Invite your friends. When I come on, please share the video because I know a lot of moms who think they're not going through postpartum, uh, but really are. So share the video, share the video, share the video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, Priscilla. Thank you for following me. Um, but I will see you all on Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for uh, baby Q&A. This week, we will be talking about postpartum. And I have one of the best people I know that can explain it to you. She's she's so sweet. Uh, but we work together as a team. I am the newborn care specialist, and she is the postpartum doula. So basically, I am there taking care of the baby. She's there taking care of mom and making sure mom is uh, doing well and taking care. You know, she may cook meals for the mom. It depends on what mom needs. So uh, I love her to death because she is awesome 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 she has taught me a lot about postpartum um but yes i'll see you all tuesday night 8 p.m central standard time hello jade monet thank you for joining me uh but i'm sorry but we're getting ready to go uh i will see you all tuesday you all have a great rest of the sunday rest of your weekend Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Do something special for yourself. Self-care is not selfish. Do something special for you, just for you. I know you have kids, but take a moment for you, okay? I'll see you all next uh, Tuesday. You all have a great, great day. Let me, okay.